So please help me welcome to stage Mr. Joe Chavez. Come on, guys. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Well, welcome to Arizona, everybody. Uh, my name is Joe Chavez. I am a certified home inspector here in Arizona. Uh, actually, I've been certified since 2005, so we can add one more year to that. I'm also a ICC certified building inspector. That is the organization that actually puts out codes both in the US and internationally. So there are a lot of groups that rely on that information regarding code, building, fire safety, water safety, everything. So I kind of kicked it up a notch because when I go out there, I wanted to be the best damn home inspector in Arizona. And I know now you have to qualify everything. So here's proof. It says best damn home inspector in Arizona. OK, so, so we could move on from there. Uh, Anyway, I just want to cover a couple of topics here. I know that uh, all of you probably, when you're looking at a home, one of your concerns is the structural integrity of that home. That is what I do for you. I work for you. My association with anybody else is just strictly a business association. The minute you tell me that you want me to do the home inspection, I'm working for you. So everything in that report is going to be unbiased. It's going to tell you everything. I don't just go up and look at a home. I happen to have a passion for what I do. So when I'm there, I actually go up on the roof. I walk the entire roof, even if it's a two-story structure, I'm very capable and very adept at figuring out how am I going to get up to that second story. How can I tell you what the air conditioner looks like up there if I don't look at it? I have to get serial numbers off of it. I have to look at the condition. Same with the attic. I don't just stick my head in there and say, hmm, nice attic. I actually crawl from one end to the other. I take photographs. When you see my report, it's going to be the most impressive report you've ever seen. Generally, uh, I have about, when I'm there on site, I take about 150 photographs. I don't use all of those, but much of that information is going to be in there. Every one of the pages, if it needs a pictorial explanation, you're going to find it in there. Very thorough, very exact, and very unbiased. I'm working for you, and that is what you definitely need out there. Uh, some of the questions that I'm asked about, and I'm going to kind of make this rather brief and everything, because there are so many facets about a home inspection. When you're going in there, there is the electrical. I actually pop open the electrical box, make sure uh, that you have copper wire or aluminum and that you're not having any arcing going on. So it's all very thorough. Your plumbing, everything is run. I do several different tests when I'm inside. When I check the air conditioner, I just don't say, yeah, the air is cool. I have a infrared red device that I shine up there that gives me the ambient temperature so I can compare it with the interior temperature. There should be what they call a differential split in there where it should be blowing and that's what I'm looking for. So everything is checked out within the house. I also look and I know I always get this question as uh, for termites. Do you do termite inspections? I am not a termite inspector. I don't believe, I, I know there's companies out there that say, yes, our inspectors do termite inspections and they also do home inspections. Well, I don't think you can be a cook and an electrician at the same time. You're either going to be good at one or the other. So I have focused all of my uh, energy into becoming the best damn home inspector, but we've already established that. So that's what I look for. I go in to inspect. Termite inspections, I look for evidence of termites. There's always indicators around. We're either looking for mud tubes, we're looking for small holes, we're looking for debris that potentially could be an environment for termites. If I see anything like that, it will be put into the report and I will actually make a recommendation that you have a uh, termite inspector come out. Uh, but uh, I'll be honest with you, I have never inspected a home where I have seen damage that is so extensive that I was concerned about it. 
You're going to occasionally see termite uh, activity. I have seen it in less, I'd have to say, than 1% of the homes that I inspect. Our termites out here are not as voracious as they are in some of their countries. We don't have the ones that are the size of elephants. There, we have three different species out here. They're uh, either, I believe, uh, they're, I've got a note down here that actually tells me uh, the dry wood, the wet wood, and the subterranean termites. The ones that we see most of are the subterranean termites. They are not the type that do a lot of destruction. They move very slowly. Uh, when you see anything dealing with structural damage, it's very minor. What we're looking for, structural damage, is just slight damage to the structure. They've eaten a little wood. They could possibly be in there. They're easy to treat and very easy to eliminate. They're not your Formosan termites, which they have in other countries, which do a lot of damage. As a fact, uh, I looked it up this morning just to make sure. As of today, we do not have that species in Arizona. They're in California, in certain climates. It's just our climate is not condu conducive to their environment. Uh, secondly, another question that I get asked about is mold. There again, folks, mold has been around forever. It's, it's everywhere. Uh, before it became an issue, people just lived with it. If they smelled it, they would clean it up. All of a sudden, it's become a real, real big issue because there's money to be made there by doing mold inspections. I have a document here from the Arizona uh, Health Services. They do not even recommend a mold inspection. The reason is there are so many varieties of mold that are out there. People's sensitivity to mold. There are so many factors and trying to determine what levels of mold are really harmful to individuals has never been determined. And there's no set way of doing that. So what they say, if mold is there, and generally it's gonna be isolated into an area where there's been a leaking faucet or water heater, that's very easy cleaned up. You go in there, you take away the source of the moisture, what happens, the mold dries up. And then you can go in if necessary and do any uh, modifications. If something has to be corrected, clean up, spraying, whatever, that is their recommendation for getting rid of mold. So it's not something where you have to have a hazmat team come in and cover the whole house and do that. It's just, and there again, I've done over 700 inspections in all that time. I have never ever seen a house where the mold condition was so bad that it was going to require some extensive work on the interior. So we have a fabulous climate out here, as was mentioned earlier. It's not really conducive to mold. It's not like we're up in the northern states where, I mean, northwest uh, area of the country where you have a lot of rainfall, moisture. So this is really an ideal environment. Most of the homes out here are wood frame construction. They hold up very well. Some of the older homes that we've had here since the 1800s are wood construction. And just because of the climate, they do very well out here. So... Uh, let me just see if I have anything here that I wanted to mention. I will say one more thing. Arizona is one of the few states, actually less than half of the states, require the home inspectors to be certified by the state and take testing. And that's what they do out here. Every home inspector out here, you cannot inspect unless you are certified. They also... Uh, uh, I have to provide you what are called the standards of practice. Whenever I do an inspection, I will send this out to you. That gives you information on what to, inspect, what to expect out of a home inspection. It runs several pages, and it covers all the electrical, the structural, the roofing, the attic, the plumbing, and these are all required areas that we have to make a comment. We just can't say, yes, you have an attic. We have to say what's up in the attic, uh, that you have uh, manufactured trusses up there, what the sheathing material is like, the type of insulation you have up there. So it's quite detailed. So be assured that when you're getting an inspection, not only are you working with a good inspector, you're also getting an inspection by an inspector who is actually certified by the state. So uh, having said that, do, uh, are there any questions?
Boy, was I that good? Oh, I hope so. Okay, let's start off right here. Um, in, Australia, in, in Australia, asbestos is a big issue. Mm -hmm. um, do you have materials that contain asbestos? It, only if it's an older home uh, and a much older home. Most of our homes out here are new constructed homes. If you're going back into homes that were uh, constructed in the 40s, 50s, that's where you're going to find asbestos material. You'll find it in some of the insulation material, some of the venting and things like that. But for the most part, uh, asbestos isn't used over here and it's not really a big issue. Uh, once in a while, you will see people get concerned about what they call a popcorn ceiling because some of that material in there may have contained some asbestos. But trying to determine that, even there, the way they treat that is what they call encapsulation. You spray it, you paint it, you hold it up there. If it's going to be removed, they recommend that you have somebody come out and do that. But for the most part, it's like if you just leave it alone and paint and do what you're going to be doing normally, you're going to be fine with it. So no, it's not really a concern over here. I did a 80-year-old uh, home the other day, and that one did have asbestos in it. But of course, I report that. And if I even suspect lead paint or anything like that, it's going to be in the report. But most of the homes that we do, it's very rare. And I, I only do these uh, older homes. Uh, I charge a lot more because I'm going to be there for hours, so it's probably not even going to be something that you're going to be considering. Yes. Yeah, hi. Hello. Hello. Um, yeah, um, if I purchase a property in Arizona and I get a report, mm -hmm. a bidding report, um, can I use that to execute the contract if so the report, the inspection is not good? In Australia, we have common clauses, like two clauses are bidding and pest report, and the other one is finance. So we have some time to organize these things, and then if, let's say, the bidding report is not good about the property, we can exit the, our purchase contract. Mm -hmm. Can we do that as well here? Well, you know, that's probably something that you should discuss with somebody that is actually... Uh, going to be working in that area. I know that in Arizona, in some of the inspections that, are perf that I've performed for other individuals, if there is a defect in that home that is so mind-boggling, I, I know that more than likely they probably can do something about the home. Say I go up into the attic and I see evidence that there's been a fire up there and you have severe structural damage to the attic uh, support system and everything. I would imagine that there is a, uh, a uh, clause there that would allow you to do something like that, but you probably should check with somebody just to confirm that. Yeah, okay. Have, uh, does Thank that you. answer it, or is there... Yeah, what, what, who is this somebody, a solicitor, I guess? Or? Well, uh, probably your uh, lending uh, agent or somebody that's working in the other end of it. Like I mm. said, I'm, I'm totally separated from everything okay. else that's going on. I'm working for you folks here, so mm. really, to remain unbiased, I have to keep that separation right there. Thank you. What's the average cost? Uh, it depends. Uh, it all goes up with the size of the home, but generally the uh, rates start at $280, and that is U.S., and the way the payment is generally made for all of the, I've done over 130 inspections for clients in Australia, so the way that is done, I work through PayPal. It's really a quick way to do it. You set up a PayPal account, we make a uh, agreement on what I'm gonna be inspecting for, and then by credit card, you just pay via credit card and it's taken care of that way. But prior to doing that, you'll get everything uh, as far as contracts, I send those out, you type your name in there, once we have that, we're good to go. But it's from $280 up, depending on the size of the home and uh, what we're gonna be doing, okay? Sorry if you've already answered this, but legislatively, is it, do we have to have building inspections? You do not have to have a building inspection, but let me just say this. It's a wise thing to do. It is a very wise thing to do. I, I, uh, 
I, I don't want to tell you, I, I don't think I have to go into things, but uh, there, there are things that are out there. But for the most part, it's very rare. But it's like anything else. The cost of an inspection, $280, as opposed to, the, to what you're buying, the security, everything else, it's a wise thing to do. I have worked for uh, a new home construction where I actually had to ver verify building plans on homes and all that through the blueprints. And because of my experience as an ICC inspector, I, I have found flaws where they left out structural supports in certain areas. And because of that experience, what I take in, even though the home is in great condition, if I see a crack on the wall, I'm not gonna be like another inspector and say, you have structural failure here. I can say, this is because of settling. It's the home is settling. I know what's behind that wall, what is supporting that. So I'm really the person you want on your team. I've heard that in Australia we have, um, our houses are built with a bit more, um, like the bricks are thicker and uh, the structural integrity of, of US houses is not built to last as long as we're used to in Australia. And I've heard that the roofs need replacing every 10 to 12 years. Um, what's your... I, I would have to say that's incorrect, yes. As, as I said, we've got uh, homes up here that were built, uh, wood construction homes that have been here forever. Uh, and I know that the construction techniques uh, those are regulated by the ICC, also the IRC. So every home that is going up has to be engineered. There has to be an engineer involved. And uh, they have to use materials. They have to comply with certain spans. They have to, uh, you know, the roofs and everything. Uh, I know most of the tile roofs over here. I've got a tile roof on my home. And uh, it's got a lifespan of 30 to 40 years. So it's going to be around for a while. And actually, uh, they actually say 50 years. So it's, it's going to be here. Uh, your, your shingled roofs are not going to last as long. But even now, they have shingle material out there that they're calling out to be uh, 25, 30 year material. So, uh, you know, the homes are structurally sound out here. Stucco is a great, great application on a home. It really encapsulates the home and structural support uh, and everything. So you can be assured that uh, I don't know where that information came from, but there are many homes out here that have been here for years and have, uh, are going to be around for a long time. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, uh, Joe, I've got um, two questions for you. Uh, the first one is relating to houses, uh, the style of houses. Is there a particular type of house that seems to have more problems than other houses uh, through your years of the, the um, building inspections? Mm -hmm. And the second one is um, related to areas. Are there areas, uh, pockets of areas in Phoenix that seem to suffer more damage, whether it be environmental or via human occupancy? Uh, not as far as the construction out here. There are two probably things that I see. A lot of them uh, is it's either going to be a uh, block home or it's going to be a frame home. And both of those homes work very, very well out here. Because of a block home years ago, everybody said, oh, this is what you want because they insulate better and everything, and they last longer. But as mentioned now with uh, wood frame homes with stucco applications, which is primarily what you're going to see out here, most of the homes are going to be that way. They, they really have very, very good insulative properties in the walls and also up in the attic areas. Uh, there's a required depth of that insulation that has to be out there to achieve R30, which is a rating that they want to see up in the attics. So that's pretty much, uh, I would have to say, as far as one being better than the other, I, I don't think that that's e even uh, something that can be uh, argued. It's, it's just uh, whichever you get, but both of them are, are very good. And I will say 90% of the homes that I see now are going to be a wood frame with a stucco application on the exterior. Your other question was, are there some areas where uh, you have effects of weather, I think, or something to that nature? Weather, weather or humans. Yeah, well, you know, 
pretty much every area. I live in a in a in a very nice area uh, close to the North Scottsdale area, uh, right on the other side of that area, and uh, you know. Uh, it, it has its, uh, I, I don't know exactly, I, I know earlier the question was asked about crime. It's, you know, I've, I've had people break into my car and take a couple of things out of there. You're not gonna, you're not gonna be safe anywhere, but uh, as far as there being an area that is more destructive as far as people vandalizing and all that, there's pockets everywhere. You know, and, and I wish I could be more definitive on that, but I, you know, uh, I, it's just, it's kind of strange. You, you'll go into some area where you think you would expect that and all the homes are well maintained. It's all up to the neighbors. You know, how do the neighbors take care of their property? I always feel good when I go into a property and I see somebody peeking out a window to see what I'm doing there. I think, great, you know, they, this is an area where people are concerned about what's going on here. So anytime I see that, I always feel very positive about that. All right, thanks. Okay, yes. Do you see much incidents of houses being stripped for metal recovery and that sort of thing? Uh, that, that is something that I'm, I have seen, and not a lot of them, but I have seen homes where that has, has taken place. I did a, a home the other day where they had taken the copper. This was on that 80-year-old home, by the way, and because it was vulnerable, it was exposed, and it had been sitting there for so long, yeah, somebody came in there. But for the most part, from what I understand, a lot of these homes that you folks are considering, they're already going to have gone through some sort of renovation or review process. For, so the most part, for the most part, they should be in great condition by the time you get ready. And if not, it's going to be in my report. You're gonna know all about it prior to it, so. Yes, sir. Um, I just had a quick question. Uh, in Australia, when they do building reports, um, they're fairly liable in that if the report is inaccurate in any way, mm -hmm. uh, it's something you can lean on. Are the laws similar in America uh, or there, in Arizona? There, yeah. You know, there there is uh, most home inspectors have errors and emission insurance. So I, I think I'm, I, I see what you're, where you're going yeah. there. And the way I feel about it is... If you're doing your job, you're never going to be involved in litigation. Yeah. I don't believe in, in doing a one-hour home inspection. Mm. In fact, if you go to my website, that is the first thing that I see on there. I know a lot of inspectors are out there, and they'll go in, and they're in and out in an hour. There's no way possible you can walk a roof, walk an attic, check electrical, do everything. So one thing that I have uh, kind of geared myself for... I will never be involved in a litigation because you're really going to have to look hard to find anything in my reports that I haven't covered. There, I just, a report that I turned over last night was 50 pages. I had, uh, I think, uh, 180 photographs that I took. I didn't use all of them, but that's the way I take care of you, and this is the way I cover myself because I'm there working hard to provide you with an accurate report, so. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Hi, Joe. Yes. Um, by the way, what is your website? Uh, it should be in the handout that uh, is there. It there, should be yeah, www.pro-check.mysite.com. Right. I believe it's on the bro brochure or one of them there, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, there's a couple of things there, so Yeah, and you can go on there and you'll even see comments from uh from other individuals in Australia that have actually uh put comments on there uh very positive by the way. Good day, Joe. Just yes. had two questions. Oh, where are we Oh, there yeah, there, I'm sorry. Mate, um in Australia, we have some soil settlement problems. Yeah. We touched on it there. Is mm -hmm. that a problem in Arizona? You, you know, there, there are areas here again, training and knowing what you're doing. If you listen to everything that is out there, I know some inspectors will say, oh, I'm working in this area. We've got soil expansion. We've got all these issues going on there. It's up to the inspector to go the, in those areas, even though you may have that condition there. That doesn't mean it's affecting the home you're in. This is where the inspector has to be very, very educated. 
Look for signs. Are there cracks? Just because we see a crack in the foundation doesn't mean that you're having structural failure. That comes from settling. Check the doors. Are the doors opening and closing? This is where you would get, get racking in the, in the frame, the window. So uh, there are areas I look for all those things. And if I saw, I've in all the homes that I've done, I found one home where I actually recommended they get an engineer out there because this was literally horrible. They were talking about in the middle of the night, it sounded like uh, gunshots going off and it was up in the attic where things were moving and snapping and they had evidence, but this was a long time ago, one home in over 700 homes. That's a pretty good record right there. So yeah. it's not, it's, I look for it, if I see it, uh, I will definitely put it in the report. Sure. And finally, um, moisture content. I know it's related to mould. Mm -hmm. um, in Australia, we have thermal imaging cameras that we check out the framing. Mm -hmm. Do we have that over here? Or it's not. You know issue? what? They they are available. They run about seven thousand dollars, and I just haven't uh, been able to kick up that much cash lately. There again, sight, smell, yeah. things of this are really. Uh, you can, you can do that thermal imaging uh, technology and you can make it see anything you want it to see. You know, I'm going to be very honest with you about that. It's a great tool. I, I have uh, never used it, but I have yet to have somebody come back to me and said, we found mold where you didn't say it was at. You've got to look for it. You, you poke around, you take your time, and you're going to find it. It's a great technology, and I do eventually intend to get it because I have people that ask about it. But until I really see that I need it, I'm just going to uh, keep doing things until it moves into that direction. Okay? Uh, just quickly, what stage of the purchasing process um, do we have the inspection? Like, say we see a home that we want to buy, mm -hmm. um, we get to you first? Uh, no, you probably want to get to the uh, individuals that are going to be working with a contract, get all that information together right there, then they will contact me and say, we need an inspection at this property. At that time, I will then contact you with the contracts, the agreement, send all that information over to you. We'll set a date when I'm going to do the inspection. Normally, I do it uh, within a day of receiving your information, and you'll have that report and everything that same evening, if at all possible. Never more than 24 hours, okay? Another very quick question. Um, I would have thought the landlord's insurance, when we purchased that, that they would have it as a requirement of us to have had a building inspection or, or something it's, like that. It's, no, no, no. That is something that uh, it's always every reputable real estate agent will tell you, get a home inspection because it's, it's what, what should be done. It's like anything else. Uh, you just want that assurance. One quick question. Sure. Um, in your report, do you advise about maintenance and maintenance costs? Like any repair? I, I do, do not give quotes because those are all over the place. And, and really, I, 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 it would be if I quoted you something and then somebody was going to double that price and then you could come back and say, Joe, you said 100 and now it's 200. So I really don't give estimates on quoting. That's really something that uh, people that I always say, uh, you know, work with a licensed contractor or whatever, I will always mention that. But as far as quoting you a price or anything, uh, I don't do that. One other service that I do, if you do want to make sure that all this work was done, I will go back out and do a follow-up inspection to see if the work was done, corrected, and all that. This is something that I don't get a lot of requests for, but people will say, hey, I want to make sure that that leak over there that you mentioned was corrected, so can you go out there? So do you use uh, criteria as well, like things that are severe and requires maintenance and maybe other problems who are not so severe on these kind of things? Do you use that in your reports? Do you have... a like uh, problems that need fixing? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely, may, yes. May I, I, immediate tonight. attention yeah. items, those are items, safety items, anything dealing with that could cause structural f uh, failure or anything where safety is a concern, electrical, 
all those things are always called out there, whether they need it or not. I've, I've had people say, well, this home was built before this area. This is not really a code requirement. Well, codes don't recognize uh, electrical shock. You know, you, you, you've got to be there. If it's now, uh, 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 and what I mean by that is that if it says if that there's a, a problem there, you should comply with the current existing codes. Plus, if you ever sell the home, you know that everything has been upgraded to that standard, which is where you want to be. Uh, yeah. You use the term block homes. Yes, uh, block. In Australia, it's got a number of different meanings. Are you talking cavity concrete? Yes, yes. we're talking cavity concrete. concrete yes, not, and, not and clay, yes, not right. Cavity exactly. Brick, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hi, I was just wondering whether um, the tradesmen need to be licensed over here to do work in, in the house. I'm sorry? Just wondering if the tradesmen over here need to be licensed? Uh, they, that depends on, on the trade that's involved. Like I electricians always. Electricians and Yes, I, yeah, electricians do. Electricians do, and other there are other trades that do not, but electricians do need to be licensed. Uh, plumbers, I believe those need to be licensed, and you'd really want to check on that. I've really not, I, I always say, use the word licensed. I always say use a licensed trade person. I prefer to use that, but I know that there are certain trades like roofing. I don't think roofers need to be licensed. But even so, I use that in there. So go with the best. Uh, you always want to do that. Okay, thanks. Oh, we're done? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So what, what, what is the most common issue that you come across in Phoenix? Uh, regarding a home inspection, yes, yes. you know, there's really no no real common issue. I, I run across everything, and this is why I enjoy it so much. Every time, in fact, when I leave here, I'm uh, going to change clothes and go out and do an inspection. Every time I, I go into a new home, there's always something different. So there's really no one issue that I could say uh, right off the top of my, uh, you know, just trying to think about it. There's no one thing I could focus on. Yeah, it's I, I ask that because we... we we ask it from the Australian context, you know, things like termites really yeah. worry us. So yeah. I'm just termites. In your shoes, what yeah, termites are not a big worrier. I can, yeah. I can, uh, you know, have you rest assured of that. That is not mold is not a big issue. Generally, it's a culmination of things. GFCI circuits not installed in a kitchen area. Uh, some electrical item not tripping. Uh, uh, roof uh, correction here, broken tiles, cracked tiles, get those corrected. It's generally a, a mix of items, but they're always in the report. And what's the stucco application? I don't a stucco that. application is actually, I don't know if you folks have that in Australia, but it's a surface application that goes on to the exterior of a home. Uh, it's a three-step process. It's almost like a concrete. That's why I'm saying that this really, really holds the home. Uh, homes out here really well and it's applied to the exterior of the home and it really is a great barrier for uh, prevention it, it's taken over the old composite wood sidings that you see on a lot of homes this is really what's going on here so it's almost like a, a, a plaster encasement of the entire home on the exterior there's a, a screen that is put on there with insulation material foam material so it's all put on the exterior of the home quite sturdy, uh, you can't break through it, uh, you know, because there's a lot of material to go through, great insulator, and it's really the, the way they build a lot of the homes out here. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, one more. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, jeez. Oh. Mm -mm. Oh, you may have already answered. I was busy writing some notes down. Do you, you re-inspect once maintenance work has been done? I, I can, yeah. and there is a charge for that, yeah. of course, but because most people uh, will feel confident with the work, the rehab work or whatever that was done out there, the corrections have been made. But I also have a few clients that have requested me to go back out 
and uh, I will definitely do that if that is a, a requirement. And have you had any issues with unlicensed tradesmen doing shoddy work and you've had to have it redone? Or? You know, I, I to this point, I have not. Most of what I have seen, there were a couple of items on a couple of homes that I inspected where they didn't get to it. Uh, and they and either it was a miscommunication with another worker and I had to bring that out But for the most part you can be assured that any corrective work that is done especially with the Association that the people that uh, you have working behind you I am going on the premise that they're they're also like myself getting quality people to go out there and do that work So we're done. Oh, wonderful. Well, folks, uh, all I can say is thank you very much for having me out here. I, I was kind of uh, panicked to come out and speak, and my wife said, you know what, you actually talk too much, so you'll be fine up there. <laughs> so I thank you all for your time, <laughs> yeah, and uh, welcome to Arizona. Thank you. Thank you very much. Some very, very valuable information there. Guys, just quickly before I send you to lunch, Warren Black is about to walk through that door any second and just give you a quick two-minute thing. And if not, yes, any second. There you go. Round of applause. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bring him to stage. Apparently, he's got something important to say, so we'll, we'll let him say it. Just on time. How are you all going? Yes. Having fun? Yes. Just letting you know, just on the super funds, which Jamie mentioned this morning, there is a way we found, I was working on it last night and this morning, get it set up pretty much straight away, get a deed set up, get it signed, and so you can go and buy your super fund this weekend. Pretty exciting stuff. Just want to let you all know that. No, absolutely not. It's completely dodgy. No, it's legal, yes. You've got to pay three or four grand. So you, work, you almost got to work that out for yourself. So let's say your fund's a 50 grand balance. Let's say you've got like three or four thousand dollars auditing fees and accounting fees. That means that you probably need to make at least a bit, about eight to nine percent more than the market, than the normal market. Because let's say 50 grand, you're paying three or four grand a year. You've got to make that each year to cover the costs. Make sense? Family Trust, same deal. Just basically we can get a deed done up, get it signed. I just worked that out this morning how to do that. So if you want a Family Trust set up, we can get one set up straight away too. So is that in the US or in Australia? In Australia. Uh, and we can put our LLC through that? Absolutely, yes. Pretty good stuff? Yeah. So all you've got to do is I'm going to be out in the foyer pretty much most of the day and into the night. So come and see me and I'll work something out for you. Any more questions? No, thanks very much. <laughs>